Hello, I um, apologise for not posting up a video last week. I, although I'd moved in and everything, I was it was quite hectic getting new, you know, certain things like food and setting up internet and bills and everything. So I, it was quite a busy week last week. So I didn't manage to make a video at all. So anyway, um, like promised in my last video, I wanted to show you what you could do with your June scroller box supplies. Um, so that was the one with all the uni Posca pens, the uni pin, fine liner, and the uni ball, Signo, white the gel pen. I didn't end up using the white gel pen because, to be honest, I actually forgot that I even had that to use. Um, I must have put it in a different pot or something, I don't know. But what I did was, I did add a couple of my own uni Posca pens I already had, so I added a ivory colour and also a fine line white um, to the colours that I already had. I also needed to create kind of like a more of a yellowy green uh, colour so I did add some paint to it but I thought if you're wanting to just use the supplies in the box not many of you might like acrylics or anything like that so I actually used very cheap Crawford and black acrylic that I got from the works in the UK so if you were to do something similar to what I've done and you need to add a bit of extra colour I suggest going for a cheap acrylic because I, I don't really think this is a great acrylic I wouldn't use it for any important work but it does the job you know so I did just add a bit of yellow Crawford and black acrylic paint so that's the supplies that I used so I looked at the colours like much like I did with the May scroller box and I couldn't really place anything where that pink would go I couldn't place it at all and then the purple was kind of much the same so I ended up doing something with the white the blue and the the green colour and then obviously I said like I said I added the ivory to that so I thought, I instantly thought Peacock, do you know, they have those vibrant bluey green colours and then the yellows, at first I thought my ivory would do the yellows but that's, it, it was a bit too dull, it was a bit too almost off-white colour so that's why I added the yellow acrylic. So I started off, I got a reference image which I will put a link in the description below to the referencing website um, and what I did was I, did, I drew out the the peacock. I did use um, watercolour paper, I think it's cold pressed, um, but you, I didn't really add that much water. As much as I'm using water, I didn't add too much. So I think just a really good, you know, even a cheap watercolour paper would probably do, but I do suggest getting cold pressed, not the kind of ridged one because the paint would be more difficult to get an even spread over there. So yeah. So I drew it out and then I did, for the background I did, I mixed the ivory colour. As you can see there I used a, uh, what's it called, like a cellophane kind of like sheet, like a plastic sheet. Anything that wouldn't absorb it, it would kind of just lay the colour on top. I drew with the pen on top of that and then added water with a water brush. You can use a paintbrush, I was just using my pencil brush from the last scroller book box because I, um, I just it works nicely so you saw that I added the colour on top of this non-absorbent cellophane like sheet and then added the water to dilute it and I just did a really faint backdrop I then used more of that ivory to kind of make it a bit more dark um, just to do extra lines on the background there um, just to add where the lines of where the quills off the back of the peacock the feathers come off do you know um, I then used the blue again these blues are very bribe, vibrant 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 but not as vibrant as the peacock they're not the right tones of blue and greens but you know I'm not going for realism here I just wanted to use the colors and use these supplies so the colors do not match 100% that's not what I was going for I was going for the look of the peacock but using these colors so the blue is not that vibrant kind of like a turquoisey running through it 
kind of blue. I do enhance it a little bit at the end of the video, but um, yeah. And so I did the blue, I had a little bit of black onto it on my cellophane sheet. I did everything without using the pen because I wanted, I didn't want like harsh lines where I've used the pen and I wanted to dilute the colouring areas and mix the blue with a bit of black to create a darker blue, do you know, that sort of thing. So that's what I tended to do. And so I did this throughout and then again with the yellows, I did need to add yellow paint. So I just did a bit of yellow paint diluted with water, much like I would do if I had a yellow Uni Posca pen. And I just did that and then I layered these colours up, you know, referring back to my reference image, going as close as I can with the colours but mainly more the shapes and the look that I was going for. So I did this throughout everything, you know, the peacock, the circles on the peacock, on the feathers, uh, I did, um, they look quite harsh at the moment but I do dull them down and I kind of wanted to keep them more yellow to keep the birds actual body and head standing out I didn't want to turn them as green but later on I do add a bit of green to those so um this point I do use my white uni posca pen that came in the scroll box just to add the white sections in between the feathers that you can see the very harsh white um I do end up covering these up uh, at this moment I did not know that I was going to cover them up as much and I was going to put them in after I'd covered them up with the feathers but it didn't seem you know, necessary. I think the feathers look nice how they were. As I'm doing, I'm lining the little circles of the feathers now, but I didn't actually end up liking that, so I do go over those afterwards. See, with this, it wasn't so much as I wasn't in my comfort zone. I was experimenting a lot, but I just wanted to show what you can do and not to be afraid of experimenting because I think it turned out quite well, even though I was experimenting. So, um this is where the uni pin fine liner comes in i did use a lot of ink doing this and surprisingly it's still full of ink like i could do a lot of things like i could do some of my doodles with this and it worked perfectly fine which i'm excited to do some doodles with this pen because it is really nice to use it's very smooth um and so here you'll see i'm doing those lines at first I struggled because I thought these lines look really random so I was trying to match the reference photo as closely as possible then in the end it was getting too difficult because my proportions are not going to be exactly the same I will not have put those circles of the feathers in the exact same point as they are on the reference image and I will not have put those lines in the exact same sp p spot things like that so I in the end I just started going with the general placing of where those you know fluffy feathers would come out from so they'd come either side of the quill leading up to that circle of colour on the feathers and then they'd kind of like envelop it and come round over the top so I kind of did that and you know experimented and you know just just did things like that and then I did random lines where there were a lot of gaps just to fill it in and I did refer back to the photo a few times just to to be sure that I was kind of heading in the right direction I wasn't making a complete mess of it so I did skip out a lot of this because it was very time consuming it took me a very long time and my hand was aching afterwards I really needed to give my hand a rest after this so you'll see that the light actually goes dark because I was doing this on an evening and then the last section is very bright video because I'm doing it in the morning with a bright light on as well um, this is also done in my new setup and it's a little bit more over the top it's less um you know from above uh not directly but at an angle so you will see my head creep in there a couple of times because it is quite far forward now and i don't realize that my head's getting in it as much um what else can i say uh i don't think there's too much to say um I'll pipe up again when there could be something else to say, so please enjoy the rest of the video. As you saw just then, I did have to take my... I do put masking tape around the photo um, to stick it on the um, work surface I'm on, this is my craft mat in the background, but then I 
for this because I was doing a lot of this kind of like feathering with my hand I really needed to keep twisting it round to get the right angles and not make a mess of it in, in a way so I did have to take that off and just fold it around the background just so I don't go over the edge because I wanted a nice clear white border around the edge um, which you'll see at the end when I take it off um, and as you can see I do overlap a lot of this feathering because it needs to have those overlaps if you look at the reference photo there are a lot of over overlapping uh, feathers going over one another and it almost looks like cross hatching Yep, uh, as you just saw, that was me. Pi this is my, uh, you know, next morning attempt after my arm was completely aching after a lot of that cross hatching there. And um, so this video is quite bright from now on. Um, this is me darkening a couple of areas because I noticed on the reference photo there's a lot of dark areas in certain places. So I did just, do you know, add a bit more pen to darken those up. So here you start you see that I start lining all these feathers behind the body of the peacock and at first I did think it was a good idea <laughs> and then I thought the photo it's just it's not that dark it's 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 kind of like a more dull brown color lining them almost off the yellow into more brown and of course I can't do that cuz usually on something like this I would add pencil crayon about now and start you know lining things and making things darker but I just I obviously can't do that because I'm trying to do something with just the supplies like I said and adding obviously my own colour but of the same supply um, so yeah it's, um, you'll see how I dull those down in a second and again I didn't much like the colours that I'd chosen for those so I did dull them down I, add, I added a bit of the the um, blue Posca, the sky blue with a bit of yellow paint and just made kind of like green colours, different shades and I went over with the yellow around the uh, you know, circles on the feather, I don't know what, what you call them, um, around the circles I'll just say and then I added green around those onto the actual feathers to show that there's green feathers, not just those black lines everywhere, there's green parts and shading and different elements to those, it's not just black. this is how I dull it down I use some of the yellow paint mixed with a bit of blue again to make it a bit greeny uh, went over it all and surprisingly the um, uni pin did run a little bit it did cause a bit of shadowing added to it <laughs> don't get me wrong I did enjoy the uh, running because <laughs> it did add a bit of shading to them but this uni pin fine liner is supposed to be waterproof so it is not just a word of warning I think it it might be maybe I left it a bit longer but I'm pretty sure I left it quite a while before I did that little coat there but uh, anyway it didn't didn't affect too much um, I added some more and I actually used the pen for this I added some more of the sky blue um, and then I added some of the emerald green pen with the actual pen just to create the smaller circles within the circles on the feathers and then added some paint just to add a bit of like almost like they're blending in one another I watered down a bit of sky blue and a bit of emerald green together to create a kind of like that turquoisey green but it didn't quite work out and then I added a bit of blue to the black just to create the shading underneath the neck um, and around and I did dab with the brush a little bit just to create it's a little bit out of shot unfortunately sorry about that um, 
oh there we go I did just create like some feathers almost um, to kind of look like that I think I ended up blending them out I kind of liked the look of that at first but it was very difficult to do this like I said I'd probably do that with pencil crayon um, and I would advise if you are going to do a challenge like this um, well it's not really a challenge just try and work with just the supplies you've got to create something I would maybe add just some pencil crayons like I've added the white paint um, I would have added some cheap pencil crayons because I do have some for my cheap um, art supply challenge but I don't think they would have gone over the paint because they are very waxy unfortunately um, this is me adding with my black fine liner um, just the dark parts on the circles because in my picture they do look very dark blue but I can't get that dark blue even when I add the black to it it just turns to grey it's not very good the paint the pigments in these uni posca pens do not act like paint some of the times because um, I did try out a lot of um, things I have a I have do you know one of those um, cellophane sheets with a lot of mixings of colours that I've done and, and stuff and they do not act like paint so you do have to check whether they do you know react the same or what colours you can make with them because it might not be what you might think. This is me adding with my white just a couple of lines at the bottom and now I am peeling off the edge and I at first I didn't do it very <laughs> well because I almost peeled off at the coating but uh, after a bit it worked out okay and then I'm left with a nice clean edge and I think that's everything. Um, I just rub out the little lines that I've made before doing that because I didn't realise I was going to make a border and then I sign it with my name. Um, so this is how I have used all the uh, June's Squalor Box supplies to create a piece of artwork that's not really in my comfort zone and might not be in other people's if they were to do something similar. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video.